You are now listening to the voice of Tamar with Vanessa Santiago. I'm at a conference right now in Pennsylvania, so this podcast is recorded in real time. And there was a preacher and he was just talking, but at some point in his sermon, he really broke down the importance of telling your story. And in my mind, I'm just like, okay, well, I do that already. So this doesn't necessarily apply to me until the Lord started to remind me of the things that kind of keep me back from sharing all of what I've experienced with my head held high. And you're probably like, well, Vanessa, you're pretty transparent. So at this point, what is left for you to share? And so I think that one of the things I've shied away from sharing are the things that remind me that I have to stay shame free and condemnation free and guilt free. I think that so often, at least for me in my own personal story, there are so many things that kind of put me into this broken and shattered place. And so what happens is that once you've experienced a deep level of brokenness, there are things that you do and decisions that you make based on that broken and fractured part of you. And those things at times are pretty shameful. One of the examples that I can give you is when I shared already, like I got an abortion. It's something that I am not necessarily proud of. It was a decision that I made that did not align with who I am and what I stand for and what I believe in. And although that is something that in my mind for me personally has been something that was shameful and I've been so open about, there are deeper things that I'm not always so big on sharing but I'm the kind of person where you're not going to discover anything 10 years into any kind of relationship that we have whether it be friendship or a romantic relationship like I give you the worst parts of me and then from day two and on you get to know the better sides of me and I think that this is not just my case but I think that it's the case of many people so people who come alongside of you and try to help you on your healing journey are at a disadvantage because you don't disclose information to them that could help them help you on your journey. A lot of times unforgiveness is one of the reasons why we remain bound but the second most common reason at least in my experience is that people don't share the things that they're ashamed of. So I'm going to give you a timeline of my life and it's not going to be in any particular order. But what I will do is highlight the worst parts of it because I think that violation is one form of trauma. But a lot of people that I know have experienced very complex forms of trauma. And so it's not that they've only been violated, but then on top of that, there's been an and, 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 and. So I'm going to give you the worst parts of me, the great parts, the sad parts, the shameful parts. I'm just going to tell it all. I'm born, I am living with my mom, the relationship, nurturing, taking care of me part is not where I need to be, I'm moving with my grandma, I experience all these violations, I see family members fighting, I move back in with my mother, she starts to use drugs, my grandmother passes away, we're removed from CPS, we move in with my dad who is trying his very best to raise three kids as a single father, which back then was not a common thing while still trying to maintain a marriage and there's friction there because you've now brought in two children who need a lot of your attention because they've just experienced forms of trauma i move into a transitional home with my mom after she finishes rehabilitation she then moves into her own home she starts using drugs again i am removed by cps all while i'm being violated on and off I'm living with my father. I do a hard transition from a very religious church to a church that is more contemporary, I guess is the best way to kind of say. And so I'm dealing with a lot with my faith and experiencing God and having a relationship with him. And then my dad experiences a very horrible separation that turns into a very horrible divorce. I meet my kid's father. We decide that in our brokenness, we want to have a baby. 
I had that baby. This was after running away from home at my dad's house. I experienced multiple cheatings. We get engaged. I get married at 18. At 19, my kid's father does not want to have any more children. But I feel like that's the only way I'm going to feel love if I keep having kids. So I get pregnant on purpose. We separate shortly after that. I go wild for a very long time. Now here's where the shameful parts start to kick in for me. I go crazy. I make poor decisions. I don't honor the covenant of marriage, meaning that I was sleeping with a man who was still married to someone. I found power and maybe strength and maybe a validation or worthiness off of this behavior because in my mind he was willing to risk it all just to be with me and I'm just gonna say that there are probably a lot of people who has tried to find worthiness or validation in relationships with people I know that I'm not the only person who has played second and third fiddle to someone who was in a relationship to feel some form of validation or maybe even if you've been on the other side of being cheated on and there was someone extra in your relationship but I did it in my brokenness and I'm not making that an excuse but I just know why that behavior happened I take ownership I know that it was wrong so I do that I'm making very poor decisions with relationships I meet a guy on Facebook he calls me pretty calls me beautiful and I'm still trying to seek and find love not only in men but my idea that children will be what's going to complete me we get pregnant on purpose he tells me he doesn't want the baby I get the abortion we break up I start dating a guy who's a drug dealer now and I told y'all that I was removed from my mother's home because I my mom was an addict, so it's weird for me to not be dating the kind of person that ruined my life, essentially. So I'm dating a drug dealer, making very poor decisions, doing major drop-offs at hotels where the Lord clearly spared my life because I could be in prison, break up with him, and then finally find Jesus. Let's take a deep breath and let's because a lot of people after saying I found Jesus are going to tell you that their lives were perfect and they made really great decisions after that and they lived happily ever after but that was not the case for me because beyond the moment on the altar where I'm being prayed for and I'm being corrected and rebuked by the Lord and even loved on him there was still an emptiness that I was experiencing because I did not partner my altar experience or I was being prayed for with my life outside of church so in my brokenness guess what I still found myself sleeping with men to gain some forms of validation but now I dealt with the condemnation and the guilt of knowing that I should have been making better decisions but still doing what was not right and I found myself in a cycle of doing that over and over and over again there were moments where the Lord called me out where he rebuked me where uh, I had encounters with women who were in relationships with men that I was dealing with and it almost ended in fist fights and the Lord's grace covered me and I sang on a worship team and smelt trash because I had just spent the entire weekend making very poor decisions with my body and with my my finances to get the validation from a man all things that people will not bother to share and so on and off I was through going through this cycle of making very 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 poor decisions in regards to relationship and you're probably like well Vanessa this is not something that I struggle with but that's fine because you probably struggle with working all the time so that you don't have to face the things that you've experienced or you're probably struggling with watching pornography because your sex drive is on 10,000 and you don't know how to pull yourself from out of that place whatever your go-to is to fulfill and satisfy the emptiness and the brokenness on the inside of you just put that in place of all the horrible things that I just said that I was doing I'm sharing this for a lot of reasons why because I think that I need to be free from fearing that at some point somebody's just gonna step out and say that I was this horrible person and I made all these horrible mistakes and you know what I own those things I repent I apologize to those people whether they accepted the apology or not I know that I have laid that down so that Jesus could forgive me and I share that because I know that so many people have experienced this or are currently experiencing these kind of things and the reason why they won't heal the reasons why 
why they don't have the courage to step into a new season of wholeness is because they're holding back all these secrets. They're not presenting the proper information to people who are trying to walk them through a process because of shame. And I want to liberate you from the guilt and condemnation and fear of your past. The person who is called to walk with you will have the capacity for every nasty secret, everything you've done, everything that you feel ashamed about. And it is really the strategy of the enemy to keep you quiet and not share your experience so that you can remain bound. And I'm not in the business of not only knowing that and not being the the first person to be transparent or just people walking around feeling like they'll never experience the healing that they need or running into walls when they are going through their journey of healing because they're keeping all their secrets. So I give you the worst parts of me. Just know that when I say that I lived a raggedy life, I am 1000% serious about that. And I say that because at times people hear what you've been through and they see the final result, but they don't know that there was an in between those two moments that could have literally taken you out. But you have to fight the good fight to remain healed. There is no way that you're going to go to an altar call and be prayed for. And that's going to be it. There needs to be accountability and there needs to be relationship with people who are going to walk you through your journey. And there's going to have to be a relationship with God. And there's also going to have to be a, a massive resetting where you cut off people and situations that will bring you back to the place where you want to heal from. And so I'm sharing with hopes that you will know that there is nothing that you could have done that's going to keep God away from you and putting his hand over your head and telling you that it is okay and that he accepts you and he forgives you. I also share that so that you could have the freedom to confess all that you have done and experience with someone that you trust to walk you through a process so that they could have the advantage of knowing all that you might deal with in regards to shame and condemnation because they're you know what it's a process and we heal one layer at a time and maybe the shame and condemnation will have to go last but i'm telling you that you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony you heal when you can confess and realize that the punches that you felt like you were going to get as a result or the side eyes that you were going to get um, as a result of you sharing are really big mountains that the enemy poses be- in front of you that are really mustard seed size to get you to be quiet Father, I just thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice. I thank you that they walk in a new degree and level of courage, that they would not fear talking about their experiences and the things that might be ugly and dirty, that they would hope that no man would ever find out, knowing that you have graced the people who are going to walk them through their journey to get them to the place that they need to be. Father, I thank you, God, that your loving arms, your comforting arms would surround them now, and they would have the courage to not only write it down, but confess it and know that you are a God that Uh, freeze us father god that we don't have to live under the shame and condemnation and fear and anxiety of our past afraid that it will pop up in moments where we are doing well or in moments where we just are trying to go through our healing journey lord we thank you that every accusation from the enemy goes down to the pit of hell from whence it came and that we come under the full understanding that you died on the cross literally for our sins god and that there's no sin or nothing that we can do that would prevent your love from reaching us god and so we embrace it and we hold it and we stand true father because there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and so I don't walk under the condemnation or the fear or the shame of my path and neither does anybody under the sound of my voice I thank you for the courage to reveal so that the enemy does not have tools to torment us out of our healing process I bless you I thank you I honor you and I call these people mighty courageous people for stepping out and doing this layer and this level of disclosure for their time of healing in the mighty matchless eternal courageous hopeful foundational name of jesus christ amen